Mario. Go ahead. How much is this right, at least, uh, in your experience? Can we go on it and believe in it 100%? Or we just to uh, ignore what it says? Especially, in, take for example, I'm not talking about meat and these things like that. I'm talking about, uh, give you say, corn, for, for example, a group, a group uh, A plus corn is not good for them. Uh, what we know is vegetable in general is something good. How much we need to believe that corn, for example, for uh, A positive is not good for them. Tomato is not good for A positive. So how much is that goes into reality? Good question. Really good question. I'm, I'm asked that question quite often. What about the blood type diet? What about the zone diet? What about the body type diet? All these books are being written and the doctors are making a lot of money from these health, so-called health models. Is there a uh, scientific fact behind these health models? And to me, as I studied more and more the subject of what is a healthy food, I found that these health models have nothing to do with the reality of the food, whether it's good for us or not. The question to ask when you, when you eat a food is the two most important concepts in a food is whether it's enzymatically active. Are the enzymes are still available in that food so the digestion is complete when you eat it, which means raw foods. So basically, eat more enzymatically active, enzymatically live foods than uh, enzymatically dead foods, which means cooked foods. That's number one uh, approach towards looking at foods and how it can help your body. It isn't about your blood type in that food. It is, you know, most of these books will not even refer to enzymatically live foods. That's number one in terms of what a healthy food is all about. Number two, after you eat the food and it turns into energy, what kind of an ash will it leave after the food turns to energy? The, the, there is waste and there is an ash left of that food. Is it an acidic ash or an alkaline ash? Alkaline stands for mineral rich. So if you eat meat, dairy, uh, uh, grains, after it's processed into energy, what's left is an acidic ash. Now, if you eat fruits, vegetables, what's left in is a mineral-rich ash. So what would that, what difference would it make whether the ash that's left after the food is processed to energy, whether it's alkaline, or whether it's acidic. Huge difference. Because the more acidic ash that's left in the body, and all of that goes in the urine, goes out in the waste every day, the more acidic foods you eat, which means the ash that's left is acidic, grains, meat, and dairy, the less healthier you become because the acid ash changes the pH level in all the fluids in your body. The ideal pH level in all the fluids in your body, and, and remember, our bodies are mostly fluid, not solid. The blood, the lymphatic fluid, the fluids in each cell is alkaline. It, the pH is on the alkaline side, not the acidic side. So the more acidic foods you eat, the more that pH level changes in each cell in your body. The more acidic the cells become, the more it, it's, it becomes, it, it starts to, to draw viruses, harmful bacteria, cancer, because that's what cancer lives on, is the acidic environment in the body. But change that into more foods that produce alkaline ash. So that means you keep the pH level and all the fluids in your body at the ideal level, which is seven or above. 
the only two parts in your body that are acidic in terms of the fluid, pH level in the fluids, is the gut and the bladder. Everything else in your body is alkaline. So again, we go back to the concept of acid, alkaline, and foods is the most important next to enzymes. Not the blood type, not the, di not the zone type. So that's what you want to ask. The food I'm eating, what kind of a, a residue would it, would it leave? Is it acid or alkaline? And the more alkaline residue you eat, foods that leave alkaline residue, the healthier you'll become. So don't look at health models. Look at these two concepts and read about them. You can go to enzymesuniversity.com. You'll be amazed how many scientific backup to the concept that the more enzymatically live foods you eat, the healthier you'll become. Check out the acid alkaline balance. What impact is that going to have on you in terms of foods? Is the, the foods are acidic or alkaline. So what you want to look for is a chart that gives you a list of all the alkaline foods and a chart that gives you all the acidic foods. So I made it very easy for myself in the healing process. If I eat 70% of my foods from the alkaline side, I might heal my body and it happened. So. Thank you. Let's not make it too complicated because I want you, when you leave here, if you convince for what you have seen, one movie about bad food and another movie about good food, the effect of not eating good food and what it, it does to you and the effect of what eating bad food does to you. We don't want to complicate things because it's very important that as you get out of this room, there are two things I really want to stress. We only think about those two things because in life, we always like to follow the theory of KISS. Keep it smart and simple. The more we get involved into the details of health, health models, concepts, technical issues, the more we are going to get complicated because we are not doctors and we're not specialists. So I want to give you a way of life and a theory of this. Keep it simple and smart when you live here. Follow it and then as you get to realize the effect of this KISS template that I'm going to tell you, the more you're going to start be interested to know more about your health because you're going to start immediately feeling the effect of this KISS theory that I want you to take and apply when you go out. But for you to do that, unless you have total ownership of your health, you will not do that. You will not accomplish it. You have to have the ownership to tell yourself from today I own my health, and only I will decide what I will eat and what I should not eat. The KISS theory is what you saw in the last movie about plant-based food. Don't worry about organic, not organic. The most important thing now, and then later on you can start fine-tuning and start asking yourself, is organic better, not better, what to do? Because we have to start changing from now. Plant-based food. What is plant-based food? Anything that is growing from the ground. Vegetables, fruits, seeds, nuts. Those are the plant-based food. Take ownership of your health, walk out of here and say, from now on, every food I will eat is going to be plant-based food. Vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, whatever comes from the ground. I can't, you would say, 
because I'm so used to eating meat, I'm so used to eating fish, and I want to have meat, fish. Okay, don't be so drastic. Start at the beginning and say, I will start 50% plant-based and 50% meat. And then make your long-term objective eventually final 80-20. They teach us that in management. Spend 20% of your energy to produce 80% of results. Prioritize what is the most important part of how you do business and spend the least amount to produce the most. Same thing when you get out of here. Use the 80-20 theory as the final result of how you want to have your lifestyle. 80% plant-based food, doesn't matter what. Just get started. 80% plant-based food and 20% animal-based. That's the long term, but just get started, do it for the sake of your own health and for the sake of this world. I want to thank you very much for attending and taking the patience and time to be with me and my sister Dunya. Hopefully that you have enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed presenting it to you.